the news, Nigeria Air Force wage war on bandits along Abuja Kaduna Highway. Presidency apologizes to South South leaders over botched meeting. And Southeast PDP caucus in National Assembly disowns Governor Omahi over the defection to the APC. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Oni Adekunle. The Nigerian Air Force has launched a major offensive against bandits along the Abuja Kaduna Highway, killing many of the criminals in their camp. The operation followed intelligence reports indicating that a cluster of huts and other structures at the location served as hideouts for a notorious bandits leader, popularly called Major, and his fighters. The defense headquarters explained that six uh, Air Force aircraft undertaking five missions in a total of 13 sorties carried out a dawn raid on the cluster of huts housing the bandits. The attack is coming 24 hours after bandits kidnapped over 10 persons on the road and also killed no fewer than five others. Disclosing the, the development in a statement on Wednesday, the coordinator of defense media operations, Major General John Enenche, said the raid cleared the Kuku area of Kagako local government area of Kaduna State. And the presidency has given reasons for the absence of its representatives from a meeting of the South-South stakeholders fixed for Tuesday in Port Harcourt, River State. Governors and leaders of the South-South region had demanded an unreserved apology from the presidency for abruptly, for abruptly aborting the meeting. But the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garbashe, who in a statement released on Wednesday, explained that the absence was due to an emergency meeting of the National Security Council held at the presidential villa in Abuja on the same day. Shehu said the president was still committed to hearing from leaders and youths from the region. He also assured that a new date for the meeting would be fixed after due consultations. Members of the Southeast Caucus of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the National Assembly have disassociated themselves from the defection of Ebony State Governor Dave Umahi to the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC. The lawmakers, while addressing National Assembly correspondents in Abuja, said they remain loyal members of the PDP and have no plans to defect to the APC. Atino Kenuke in our report. It is barely two days since the governor of Ebony State, David Umayi, defected from the party which produced him as governor for two terms. The People's Democratic Party accusing the party of marginalizing the Southeast on the issue of zoning. Speaking with National Assembly correspondents on Wednesday in Abuja, the Ebony State PDP lawmakers in both chambers of the National Assembly disowned the governor for defecting to the APC. They described the governor's action as indecent and unwise. Why we support that, that it is the turn of the South East to fly the presidential flag of any of the major political parties come 2023, yet we consider it impolitic, indecent and unwise to give ultimatums and conditionalities in a bid to secure zone. The lawmakers accused the governor of disloyalty to the PDP, having elected as the state PDP chairman from 2003 to 2007 and as deputy governor from 2007 to 2015 and two-term governor from 2015 till date, all under the platform of the PDP. As Democrats, we concede Chief Omahi's right to join any political association of his choice. However, as federal lawmakers, we are not unaware of the Supreme Court decision that candidates are products of the political parties. What it means is that political office holders are not at liberty to migrate from one political platform to another, particularly when there is no division in their party. They also noted that candidates are products of their political parties, assuring that no single member of the National Assembly Caucus is towing the governor's line of defecting. From Abuja, Atinuke Nuke, TV 360 News. 
Meanwhile, Governor Dave Umahi has, however, reacted to claims that he defected to the All Progressives Congress because of the presidential ticket that may be zoned to the Southeast in 2023. Umahi said his decision was purely to protest against injustice done to the Southeast under the People's Democratic Party and not for any personal gains. APC never promised me any position. They never promised Southeast any position. There was no such discussion. Since 1998-99, the Southeast people have supported PDP in all elections. It is absurd that since 1998, going to 2023, the Southeast will never be considered to run for presidency under the ticket of PDP is very absurd. And if people are shouting in this country of fairness, equity and justice, and uh, I stand in a place where such is not practiced, then I have to, you know, um, re-examine my head. Nigerians are calling on the federal government to fix the country's refineries as a way of addressing the consistent increase in the price of fuel. This follows the recent hike in the pump price of petrol to 170 naira and the sharp increase in the prices of food items that followed. Our correspondent, Abisola Adebayo, now reports. From the markets to the petrol stations, it is the same complaint by Nigerians on the prices of foodstuff that have suddenly hit the roof due to the increase in the price of fuel. People are not enjoying the dividend of democracy. On a serious note, fuel is increasing every day and so many other issues that are coming up, insurance and so forth. You can imagine that there's a lot of suffering all over Nigeria. The fuel of the thing that is very costly in Nigeria now, I, I, I think this thing affects so many things. And in terms of uh, the transport and then everything, everything increase. So they should consider the poor, the poor people now. They're just thinking about themselves. But we, the poor people, we are the ones suffering most. And we have a lot of things they should just do for us. Labour leader Amechi Asugni speaking to TV360 Nigeria, however says the fuel crisis in the country can be easily fixed by simply making the refineries work. He says selling of crude and importing refined products is a bad business for the country. The, the, the currency of Africa can only get value when other parts of the world come to Africa to shop, come to Africa to also buy what they need in their country. They, they don't have it all. We have more here. If we can refine our oil, most of the European countries and even American, they will also be looking for oil, bringing their ship here to buy finished product from Nigeria. And that will make our currency stronger. So, but each time we depend on going there, we import everything, it affects our GDP. And I just hope they will learn lessons from whatever that has been communicated in this regard. The federal government, through the Minister of the Petroleum for State, Timmy Presilva, has however said the increase was not determined by the government, but by the forces of demand and supply. Abisola Adibar, TV 360, Lagos. The Center for Social Justice has queried some items in the 2021 appropriation bill with about 325 billion naira expenditures deemed inappropriate, unclear and wasteful. The budget, which has drawn criticisms from a cross-section of Nigerians, was presented to the joint session of the National Assembly in October by President Muhammadu Buhari. CSJ Lead Director Eze Onyekwere, during a review of the 2021 bill and estimates in Abuja, insists that the National National Assembly should review the estimates to free up resources for other important needs of the country's economy. The treasurer that goes beyond his limit and record all activities against the provisions of the law, when he is you know, prosecuted, he should be sentenced to 10 years in prison without a on any fine. Meanwhile, the first thing is a presidential candidate or whatever, any candidate, still beyond the limit, the maximum they can give him is just about a six months or thereabouts with 500,000 charges. We discovered a situation where candidates are supposed to spend money based on a limitation provided by the Electoral Act, but there is no obligation on them to report to INEC. Okay? 
So we want to fix that obligation in law. Although INEC had a policy, but we want to fix it so that it can become very, very enforceable. We also looked at the monies, the ceilings, and we think they are not realistic. They were made at a time the Naira had more value. These ceilings need to be reviewed. We've also looked at issues around those who donate. The lack of a ceiling for people to donate to political parties, even though there's a ceiling for what you can donate to a candidate. And it was supposed to fix that in collaboration with the political parties. That has not been done. And then issues around monies being asked from aspirants who want to contest elections and all those kind of money for forms running into tens of millions of naira. We also want those issues to be reviewed. So quite a plethora of issues that need to be reviewed. The suspended acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Brahim Magu, has failed to appear before the Code of Conduct Bureau, CCB. Magu was due to appear before a panel on November 17th at its headquarters in Abuja on an alleged breach of conduct in public office, but did not show up. The commission had asked the embattled EFCC boss to come along with acknowledgement slips of all asset declaration forms since joining the public service, while Magu refused to appear reports they did not also write or represent uh, or represented by his counsel to explain why it did not honor the invitation some shop, owner, uh, some shop owners at the Wusetu Plaza in Abuja have accused the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, of illegal demolition. This follows the partial demolition carried out by the FCTA on Monday. The shop owners are now calling on authorities to follow due process in the discharge of their duties. TV360's Atinuke Nuke report. In the video that went viral on social media during the attempted partial demolition, a voice was heard crying and pleading that the demolition be halted, at least to allow the occupants evacuate the building. Amaka here, they did not even inform people that are upstairs and they are demolishing the building and a shop is open upstairs. They did not even inform us. Our life is in danger. The landlord can be seen in front of the bulldozer trying to prevent them from further destruction. This is wickedness! This is wickedness! Let me kill him! This is wickedness! This is wickedness! This is wickedness! This is wickedness! We spoke with an eyewitness who also manages one of the shops at the plaza about the demolition. And yesterday at about 9 to 10 in the morning, we were inside our mall. We had people shouting outside. We rushed outside to see what was happening. We saw a bulldozer coming inside and they were threatening to bring down the building. They, were, they just broke the front mirror, front glasses in, in the front uh, mall. We also spoke to the woman heard screaming at the background of the video. She said she was unaware of the demolition until she was alerted by noises and had to go downstairs to intervene. There's a tractor trying to pull down the building and, you know, I just rushed to peep through the um, show glass and at last I just heard a, a, crumb, a, a sound of uh, something crumbling and we're like, I just told my other colleagues that they should let us leave the showroom immediately. So that was when we rushed downstairs. We can go downstairs to see um, the wall that, that was being broken. You know, he could say he was targeting the glass. And the um, or, or on what we do not even think of could happen. So, and if anything should happen from the background, you we can your guess is as good as mine. The way he was doing it, honestly, he could pull down the whole building. It was the opera of uh, people that were there and myself, and then the owner of the. Um, the landlord of this building came and stood in front of the tractor that the tractor should crush him to death. And that was when he stopped. The management and owner of the building wasn't present as at the time of filing this report. We reached the management of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, via telephone. They said the ground floor of the plaza was originally meant to be a car park, but the owners illegally converted it to shops. According to the development control, they had earlier served them notice since June this year to revert to the original building plan, but the people allegedly refused to revert, hence the partial demolition, so that the illegally constructed shops can be reverted to Kapak, as was approved in the plan. 
from Abuja at Sinuke Nuki, TV360 News. No fewer than 3,000 participants are expected to grace the third Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit slated for the 20th and 21st of November 2020. The summit, which is to be declared opened by the Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, has as its theme post-COVID-19 economic resurgence targeting diaspora investment. Addressing journalists at a press conference ahead of the event, Chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa, said the two-day summit is to create an avenue for prospective, meaningful and sustainable diaspora investment to be relied upon to boost economic growth in Nigeria. The key areas we'll be focusing on this year will include healthcare, education, agribusiness, creative, entertainment and sports, telecommunication, ICT fintech and manufacturing. Now the aim, as we've said before, is to establish a platform where diaspora investors can interact with potential sponsors, partners, collaboration and government. They will have direct roundtable deals for mutual benefits. So wherever you are in the world, we are expecting diaspora investors and potential foreign investors with a favorable risk appetite, seeking opportunities for a decent return investment in Nigeria. Diaspora Nigerian businesses, particularly startup as well as growth-oriented MSMEs, seeking venture capital and investment in return for equity participation in Nigeria domiciled businesses and projects. We need to really focus on the social and the economic opportunities for our people how to help them. We look at the grassroots, we look at the small businesses. These are the people that will have the profound effect. This summit will impact them in the most profitable way. It's about you know, maintaining their homes, it's about expanding their businesses or creating new businesses, it's about generating incomes, the ability to be able to hold their heads up in society and take care of their families, it's about creating jobs. There's a lot of youth restlessness because they are anchoring and clamoring for changes. These are the people who will be very prominent at this summit. The Kogi House of Assembly has called on the state and federal ministries of health to unravel the cause of the strange disease which has killed 50 persons in Olama Boro local government area of the state. The House made the call at Tuesday's plenary sitting in Lokoja, the state capital, following the adoption of a motion on urgent public importance raised by Anthony Uja over the strange illness that has claimed over 50 lives. According to the lawmaker, infected persons uh, who exhibit symptoms such as headache, red eyes, loss of appetite, as well as inability to urinate or defecate within one week, uh, usually die within one week of contracting the disease. However, the Commissioner for Health in the state, Saka Audu, debunked the statement of the lawmaker and said there is no cause or no case of strange disease in the state and no death has been recorded. The, the Commissioner said the deaths were recorded in a community in Enugu State, which borders Kogi State. Well, let's take a break here, but still to come, federal government saves about 45 billion naira monthly from the implementation of the Treasury single account. Details after this break.
Glad to have you back. Now, here is a quick reminder of some of our top stories tonight. The presidency says it regrets the absence of its representatives from a meeting of South-South stakeholders fixed for Tuesday in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garuba Shehu, in a statement released on Wednesday, explained that the absence was due to an emergency meeting of the National Security Council held at the presidential villa in Abuja on the same day. And we also told you that Governor Dave Umahi of Ebony State has responded to comments that he left the People's Democratic Party for the All Progressives Congress because of 2023 presidential ticket. Umahi, while reacting to the position of the National Assembly caucus on his defection, said he took the step to fight against injustice in the PDP. Let's now turn our attention to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has recorded 152 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of infections in the country to 65,457. Meanwhile, no new COVID-19-related death was recorded in the last 24 hours, maintaining the death tally of 1,163. The NCDC also disclosed on its official Twitter handle on Tuesday that the 152 new cases were confirmed in 12 states, with Lagos leading with 61 cases, followed by Oyo and Yobe with 28 and 10 cases, respectively. And Pfizer and BioNTech have announced that their complete experimental vaccine shows 95% effectiveness without any safety concern. The company say their experimental COVID-19 vaccine appears to protect 94% of adults over 65 years old. The data available shows about 41,000 people around the world who have received two doses of the vaccine and no safety concerns <clears throat> have been raised. Recall that the companies had earlier announced the 90% success in its drug trial, this new result brings the vaccine closer to achieving emergency use authorization from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Well, we'll take another break here and when we return, it will be time for business news. Don't go away. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose centre, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if this thing he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the Construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. Let's now join Mary Kanu for the latest developments from the world of business. Over to you now, Mary. Uh, thank you, Oni. 
The Federal Accounts Allocation Committee, FAC, has allocated a total sum of 2 trillion naira to the three tiers of government and other statutory recipients of the, in the third quarter of 2020. Now, this is according to the latest edition of a quarterly review of the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. And during the review, it was revealed that despite the accompanying harsh effect of the pandemic, this disbursement is the highest for year 2020, as it is the first time in this year that the total disbursement will exceed two, three, two trillion naira for a quarter. And according to the report, the allocations to the federal government declined to 812 billion naira in the third quarter of 2020. Now, the allocations to state government also declined to 676 billion naira, while allocations to the local government areas declined to 429 billion naira. And Nigeria saves about 45 million naira monthly through the implementation of the Treasury Single Account TSA. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed said this at the signing of a memorandum of understanding with the Gambia to avail the foreign nation Nigeria's vast knowledge, experience and technical expertise on the implementation of the TSA. Ahmed stated that the implementation of TSA has benefited Nigeria immensely and has helped the country to easily determine the aggregate cash balance which is critical for managing public finances at a time of acute fiscal constraints and in addition nigeria according to the minister now has better control over money supply on the monetary policy side i will take a pause here now and return with stock market review Now, for the first time since the start of the week, the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed positive with a 1.68% gain. That is 34,818 basis points. Now, contrary to projections by analysts, market capitalization of listed equities also closed positive at 18 trillion naira and gained 1 trillion naira. Now, the positive turn of events saw the industrial and consumer goods sector lead other equities as Dangote Cement and Nigerian Breweries left yesterday's top four equities with the most losses to come tops today selling at 195 and 58 naira respectively while dangote sugar and um, wapco completed the list of top four gainers with a two naira and a um, one naira gain now a lot seems to be going on in the financial services sector as three equities from the sector are on the list of top four losers stambic ibtc unity bank and cornerstone insurance plc all recorded losses while adova uh, PLC from the oil and gas sector summed up the list of today's top four losers. Now, in summary, 661 million units of shares worth 8 billion naira exchange hands in 7,324 deals. Now, on the foreign or in the foreign markets, earlier today, U.S. pharmaceutical companies Pfizer and BioNTech revealed that the COVID-19 vaccine that they talked about last week, which they said was 90% effective, that it's now 94% effective which is uh, um, and it will be ready at the end of the year now this pushed the pressure buying pressure in the u.s and the uk stocks at fusay and dow jones picked up from yesterday's losses recorded with a 0.26 percent and a 0.34 percent gain respectively while the asian stock nikkei closed for the day in a bearish note with a 1.10 percent loss and that's all on Stock Market Review. Over to you now, Oye, for the rest of the news. Thank you very much for that update, Mary. Moving on now to more positive news coming from Central Africa, where the Democratic Republic of Congo has declared an end to its 11th Ebola outbreak nearly six months after cases were reported. The end of the outbreak in the West Province of Equator marks the first time the vast Central African nation has been Ebola-free in about two and a half years. The health ministry uh, made the official declaration along with the World Health Organization on Wednesday after no new cases were registered in more than 48 days. WHO says in total more than 55 deaths, 119 confirmed cases, 11 probable cases and 75 rec uh, recoveries were recorded. Well, with that, we've come to the end of news now. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. Oh,